The ship is sailing. Visitors a shop, please. The ship is sailing. Be a good boy. Huh? Yeah, I know. I've got right me. Say hello to Grandma and Grandpa. Okay. Bye-bye. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Where have you guys been? I've been looking for you. Ah, come on, let's go. Okay. must be Leonardo da Vinci. I see that you are looking at the, the great Leonardo. Do you know who Leonardo was? Um, sure. He was a sculptor. He's a painter, I think. I think he was an inventor, too. Very nice. And the person. Do you know what the person is? He's the one that takes care of all the money, I think. No. The person is the man who is looking after the passengers. And I think I'm going to look after you now because we are going to lunch. The store put Mrs. Feingold at our table. Now we'd have to eat with an adult. Unless she got seasick or fell overboard or something. We'd have to eat with her for eight whole days until the Leonardo got to Italy. The ship was about two blocks long and could carry 2,000 people counting the crew. There was enough room in the lifeboats 
for everyone in case the Leonardo sunk. The first afternoon, there was a boat drill. Everyone had to put on their life preservers and practice going to the place where they'd get into the lifeboats in case the captain ever gave the order to abandon ship. Captain Magri had been going to sea for over 40 years, but he hadn't lost a ship yet. The captain is responsible for the ship, for all of the passengers and crew. What he says, everyone has to do. One day, I was looking at the ocean. It was getting kind of rough. Mr. Lorenzo Gill asked me if I'd like to go up to see the bridge. Passengers aren't usually allowed up there where the captain and officers navigate the ship. Mr. Gill said we were making 24 knots, which is about 27 miles an hour. He said that unless we got some real heavy seas and had to slow down, we get to Gibraltar on schedule, six days after we left New York. The Leonardo da Vinci is one of the most modern ocean liners in the world. She has automatic steering equipment, but Mr. Gio said a helmsman could still do a better job of holding her on course, especially in rough weather. The helmsman watches the compasses and steers the course given to him by the captain or officers who shoot the sun with their sextants. By measuring how high the sun is and other things, they can chart the exact position of the ship in the ocean. The signal tells the engine room how much power the captain wants. The black letters in Italian are forward speeds and the red reverse. Tutta forza means full speed ahead and that's what we're going now. The radar tells if there are any other ships around or if there's anything in the way. The antenna keeps turning, sending out radio waves in all directions. And if they hit anything, they're reflected back and can be seen on the radar screen. In case someone wasn't looking and the Leonardo hit something anyway, these levers close doors which seal off the water in the smashed in part and we probably wouldn't sink. In case there were a fire, the lights would tell the captain just exactly where the fire was, and he could close doors, which would keep the fire from spreading. These dials tell how the stabilizers are working. The stabilizers are like giant wings coming out from both sides of the ship, under the water. When they move, they help to keep the ship from rolling sideways in rough weather and making everyone seasick. It was really getting rough and windy now, but Mr. Gill said these were just what they called fat seas. We kept hoping there'd be a storm.
Every day we'd go exploring some new part of the ship. I found the hospital and met the doctor. He said once or twice he had to operate on somebody in a big storm when the ship was really rolling around. But most of the time he just takes care of people who are a little bit sick to their stomach. This is a gym. Huh, what is it? Trying to get rid of it. Get on. Turn it on. Wow! Mi sono innamorato di Marina. Una ragazza mora marca Marina. Quando le chiesi che volevo amare, mi chiedevo... I found the cruise mess, where they eat or just sit around when they don't have any work to do. It takes about 700 crewmen to run the Leonardo. Waiters and sailors. Deckhands who do the hard work like handling cargo and painting all the time and making sure everything works like the propellers on the lifeboats. At the bottom of the ship is the engine room. Mr. Maestrini, the chief engineer, showed me around. This is the master control panel that shows how the boilers and turbines and generators are working. This is the turbine room where steam is shot into giant wheels which turn the propellers. We went down even lower. We are way below the water now. This is the boiler room, where oil is used to heat water to make the steam to turn the turbines. It takes over half a million gallons of oil to get the Leonardo da Vinci from New York to Genoa, where we're going. In the galley, the cooks were getting lunch ready. I found out that in just one crossing, the Leonardo uses over 22,000 pounds of meat, nearly 9,000 pounds of just spaghetti, and 4,000 pounds of sugar. Gee. There was even a print shop aboard where the menus and the ship's newspaper were printed. While the crew is working, the passengers are having a good time. Hey, little boy. Hey, you there. Hey, what you think you're doing? Trying to catch a whale. Maybe you will. We were getting pretty close to Europe now. The crew could listen to the radio from Italy. And Professor Della Robbia 
who was the ship's magician, gave me some Italian lessons. Duomo, Duomo is a big church. If you go to Milano, it's a Duomo di Milano. It's a... No, uno. Uno. Due. Due. Tre. Tre. Quattro. Quattro. Cinque. At night, we'd usually go to the movies. In the ballroom, there was dancing every night. On the last night, before we got to Gibraltar, there was the fancy hat contest. We'd never go to bed until real late. And then Peter would always fool around, doing something, and be the last one in. You go to bed. in the morning, we passed through the Straits of Gibraltar. You could see Africa on one side and Europe and the Rock of Gibraltar on the other. Now we were in the Mediterranean and it was warm enough to use the pool, which was filled with ocean water. In just one more day, we'd be in Genoa, in Italy, with Grandma and Grandpa. I know we'll never get a chance to take a trip like this again. Really a great trip.